Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we're talking about another one of those wonderful free 3D tools that every artist should add to their toolbox. Today we're looking at instant meshes. Now, first off, I'm gonna probably call it instant messages at least 13 times during this video. It's very, very hard to say the one without saying the other. So I apologize if I do that. So what exactly is instant meshes? Well, as I mentioned earlier on, it's free. Two, it's open source, and three, it's awesome. It is for retopology. Now, retopology is the process of taking a very dense or high polygon mesh and creating a low polygon mesh version from it. And there are two approaches to this, manual, which means work, or automated, which means less work. And this is in the less work camp. And I like the less work camp. Now, there obviously are trade-offs. When you let a computer do it, the job can be a little yeah. but you'll find that that's where instant mesh just really shines. It does a very good job job of producing a low polygon object for us. So let us jump in. Now, first off, we are going to take a look at Instant Meshes itself, available up on GitHub. As mentioned earlier on, it is open source. License is somewhat proprietary, but very, very open. So do be sure to read that before you do anything funky with it. But you will see that Instant Meshes is built on the Instant Fields Aligned Meshes um, talk from the ACM transactions on graphics preceding Seagraph Asia 2015. And there is more detail, the PDF form, a video form, and a project page, this guy right here. So if you want to know more about the algorithm behind Instant Meshes, over on the Interactive Geometry Lab, there is more detail, and I will, of course, toss that link in. If you, like me, are using this as a tool and you are happy with the answer being, it's magic, and I'm happy with that answer, then you don't need to worry about the algorithm at all. But if you want to put your science-y hat, science hat on for a bit and learn a bit more about what's going on here, that detail is available to you. And of course, so is the source code. And that is another awesome thing about this project. It is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So there are pre-compiled binaries for all of those things, as well as data sets available for you to start and play with. You just have to grab one of these, but if you want some data to go with, grab this guy as well. There's also compilation instructions, but you don't need to build it yourself. And the workflow can be quite simple. Now, one of the cool things about Instant Meshes is actually this algorithm powers Modo. Now, Modo is a thousand plus dollar uh, 3D modeling application out there. So this is a battle tested algorithm. Once you've grabbed the uh, and extracted the uh, executable, you can throw the data sets into that folder and run it. And this here is Instant Meshes. Now, one of the cool things about Instant Meshes is it can also be run from the command line. So if you have a bunch of meshes to automatically do and you're happy with the default results, you can batch this off to a script as part of your build process and you are off to the races. So what do we do here? I'm gonna show you the streamlined, quickest possible workflow that you could do. And I think it will show you just how powerful and awesome Instant Meshes is. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with a very dense mesh. Open up the meshes. You can see here there are a number to work with. And I'm gonna just start with uh, where's the kid? There's the kid. So we'll start with this guy right here. Now you can go over here into advanced and you can actually show how things should be shown. And we'll go ahead and show the wireframe on it. So you got an idea of the mesh that we're dealing with. Right mouse button will pan you around. Left mouse button will orbit and middle mouse button or scroll wheel zooms in. And you see this mesh is, it's messy. Uh, it's triangles, it's not really any regard towards, it's not ready for real time usage, probably was acquired via a scan of some kind or possibly via a sculpt. And that's pretty typical in today's workflow. You could use something like Meshroom that I covered just a few weeks ago to scan something from the real world and then you use instant meshes to clean it up and make it more ready for real time or game use. Um, and that's what we're gonna do. So we got this guy, we can see the kind of polygonal mesh that we're dealing with. So we'll just turn that off. We'll get rid of the advanced tab and we pick how to retopo it. Again, this is getting more into the algorithmic detail and I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty today. Instead, I'm going to show you the easy mode to start anyways. So first we've got right here, uh, we set how many polygons we want to use in our generator. So there's 1.8K. So just shy of 1900 polygons as our target. And then you solve it. Orientation field, you see top level flow. We'll get back to this in a second. Position field, you click solve on it. There's the, the mesh prototype that it's gonna go ahead with. Go to export mesh. You probably want pure quads. Pure quads are nice for smoothing, for um, animation, for nice seamless joints. Basically, if you are polygon, polygonal modeling, you almost always wanna work with quads if possible. They're also easier to work with for later on, things like edge loops. It just makes it easier to, to edit this mesh after the fact. So pure quads is a nice thing. And then extract mesh. And there you go. That's it. You can basically create a low polygon version of any 3D object in just seconds. And you don't really even have to do anything. You can get into a whole bunch of advanced options. Or we can do smoothing iterations to change the end result. Click Extract Mesh again and you can basically create a smoother version of your mesh. 
or we can go back to no smoothing and have it create that end result. But you, even with no effort at all, you can come in here and just kind of tweak out the number of polygons. So, okay, let's give this a $6,000 insufficient resolution to do oh because it converted down so but you can change out your polygon target on the fly create it down extract a new mesh and then when you're good with it go ahead and save it out it's the same foil formats that you can import which is obj or wavefront format which is universal or the stanford polygon format ply um just about every single 3d modeling application under the sun supports that format so you were good to go uh, and that is all that is really required to get this guy pumped into your workflow and <laughs> Again, it's one of those tools. It's an it just works tool. It's completely free and it can just change your workflow. Now, if you come from a 3D background, you've probably already seen this kind of tool in your arsenal. So, for example, if you're a Blender user, there's Blender's Decimate tool, which basically will create a lower polygon version of a dense mesh. Compare the results from instant meshes with uh, the decimate modifier and you will immediately understand why instant meshes shines it just creates such great results now if you do want a little bit more control over the end result well that's available here actually so let's just start over again so we'll bring the girl back from the very beginning and we'll do our initial salt and you'll see here it's there's the 66 singularities singularities are kind of junction points or points where the mesh has to make a decision now a lot of times when you're modeling what you do is you try your hardest to hide these things there's always gonna be some kind of a singularity but you hide them you know in the less visible things in the ear crack if you can behind the ear that kind of stuff um, but what we can do is go ahead using these three tools which by the way i'm not going to use this one because it makes the solving process really really slow but this we can use as a magnet to move create or cancel orientation singularities but what we're going to do here is this guy and what this allows us to do is make adjustments to the orientation field. So if we want our mesh to be a little bit different, so here we can see our flow goes this way and this way, but say we wanna have more depth or detail right there. I can actually just draw right there and you see the mesh like instantly updates. So we can just keep doing that. And then we could do one down this way too. So we can kind of define the control lines and then just click solve again and it solves using our overrides. And then you get the same thing. Once you get into the position field, this is creating sort of like a prototype mesh. So you can see a little bit more detail and you can use the magnet to move those guys around. Again, I'm not going to do it because it is an absolute pig or we can even again, come in here and actually define. So I'm going to just screw this topology up by going diagonal across it. And you see, we're, we're absolutely messing with the algorithm and we're creating all kinds of singularities. So this is not how you want it to flow, but you can come in and do an override of it. So if I get rid of this guy, it's gonna be a little bit less awful, but we can kind of override or tweak the way that the underlying mesh is gonna be generated. And as you can see, we can easily also get rid of our changes as we go and it'll do the retopple on the fly and then again once you're happy you just go ahead to export mesh extract your mesh out and you see it is following those lines for us it's it's just a staggeringly cool tool it's easy to use but there's the power there so if you want to get in there and really tweak the end result it's not like with the decimate tool you basically go okay make me a lower version of this you don't like the results well you don't use the decimate tool in this particular case with these controls um, between the magnets and the the drawing or the combing um, you can really tweak how the mesh is going to be generated and as you see we're getting pretty good close to real-time feedback going on here so instant meshes is definitely one of those things you want to check out now if you're going to be using the workflow that i mentioned earlier on uh, when i covered mesh room i'll throw that link down below earlier um uh, sorry as well and that is that whole using your phone or um, camera for scanning an object into 3d if you want to take the results of that and actually use them in the world in a way that's useful something like instant meshes is just your best friend the same way as if you are starting with uh, a sculpting based workflow but you actually want to generate a real-time um, polygonal object out of it a game ready object instant meshes generates very nice very clean meshes and it's it's exceedingly easy to use because you also see here we've got additional controls over it, you kind of want to do these earlier in the workflow uh, but it, it's just not hard to work with at all and it is again as you can see from this interaction a very trial and error -y tool so we can just kind of tweak things up on the fly and get our results almost immediately I, it's just 
one of those things that you need to be aware of. So if you weren't already, go grab Instant Meshes. It's less than like two megs to download. Again, completely free, completely open source and available for every platform under the sun. It's been around for a few years. In fact, I covered it uh, right after I started this channel. It, it's really one of those tools that I like to shout from the mountaintops for people to know about. Because if you don't know about it and then you find it, you've probably done this in the past and went, Oh my God, I could have saved so much time if I knew about this. So hopefully I reached a few of you today. Hopefully this it was uh, an introduction to a tool you've never seen before, or maybe a sort of reaffirmation of a tool that you know and love. Either way, hopefully some of you guys found this useful. Let me know, comments down below. All right, talk to you all later. Goodbye for now.